Hi, and welcome back to The Cottage. Today I am sharing another list of things that your house and mine doesn't really need. I recently read a statistic that the average American household has roughly 300,000 items inside of it, which blows my mind when I really sit and think about it because how many items can one person use at any given time? If you count the items that you're wearing, that's maybe eight to 10. If you count the items of an activity that you're doing, add maybe 10 more. That leaves 299,980 items that are just doing what? Sitting there and taking up space. Most homes have items inside of it that are not really used or not needed. And so today's list video is not a shaming session. It's simply a way to get you reflecting on these really common items and asking yourself the question if you really do need to have them around. If I say something on this list that you have use of, you use regularly, you like to have it in your home, then do not get rid of it. By all means, it is not clutter in your home. But you may find that I mention a few things that you could live without. The first thing that your house does not need is laundry baskets. You can bet as a family of seven, we do quite a bit of laundry every single week. I used to have multiple baskets that I would shuffle around, but they're really bulky and hard to store. And so eventually I pared down to one laundry basket that I conveniently slipped into my dryer when it wasn't in use. And this technique worked really well for me for a while until I decided to just bite the bullet and get rid of my laundry baskets altogether. And now what I do instead is I use our hamper that we use for our dirty clothes. After I've poured in the clothes into the washing machine and washed the liner of this hamper, I'm able then to use that same hamper as my laundry basket and that will help me to bring items then back to the rooms and transport them around the house. The second item is any trophies, medals, or ribbons that you won back in the day. Sure, it was exciting to win these awards back in middle school, high school, maybe even college, and they meant something to you at that time. But what do they really do for you now? Are you really proud of them? Do you display them? Do you, do you make it a priority that people know that you earned these things? If not, they're likely just taking up space in your attic or in your storage closet. The third item you do not need to keep in your home is partially used notebooks. Maybe you fell into the same habit that I did of wanting to buy brand new school supplies each and every year, but then what would happen to the extra stuff that you had from the year before? It would just stick around in a cabinet as a backup in case your child ran out, but then you'd forget about it. And so the better option is to send those partially used notebooks to school with your child at the beginning of the year and not buy new ones until how they're actually needed because having them in your home taking up space isn't doing anybody any good. Number four, old receipts or product manuals. Some of these may be for items that you no longer even have anymore. I used to have the habit when my husband and I were working on getting out of debt of saving each and every receipt that we received because it was a good way for me to track our spending and make sure that we were staying in budget. And I kept them all in a file folder and eventually that folder just kept getting more and more plump until one day I came to the very obvious realization that I didn't need to keep receipts such as grocery receipts because I was never going to return that apple, for example, that I had already eaten. And maybe you have some receipts like this as well where you've gone past the date of return that you can't return the item anymore anyway, so why do you need to keep the receipt around? Or product manuals, like I said, if you have manuals for items that you no longer have possession of, you might be able to get rid of quite a huge stack. Number five goes along with number four, and that is boxes or packaging that your new items come in. Raise your hand if you are guilty of keeping shoe boxes or boxes that you received from an Amazon order. These usually accumulate for a couple of main reasons. The first is that we want to keep that original packaging in case we need to return an item. And the second is that we like to keep those nice crisp boxes around for gift wrapping purposes. These are both valid reasons why you would keep boxes. The problem is we usually keep them longer than we need to and much more than we need to be keeping around. And so if you have had a product for three months or so, I'd say that is probably enough time to realize that you're not going to be returning your item. You could get rid of that original packaging. And in terms of boxes for gift wrapping, maybe only keep a handful. Give yourself a limit of how many you actually need. Item number six that your house does not need, vases that come with flower deliveries. 
Now, every time that you get a delivery of flowers, it's a beautiful moment. The flowers are gorgeous. Likely the vase that it comes in is of low quality. So I don't usually recommend keeping these around. Instead, invest in a high quality glass vase that you can use multi-purpose for cut flowers or wildflowers or different nature arrangements that you may have. Or another idea is to repurpose other items in your home, such as a serving pitcher. Those will hold flowers just fine. Number seven, chargers and cords from outdated gadgets and devices. It seems to me that whenever new technology is introduced, it comes with a brand new way to charge as well. And I would say that most homes probably have some sort of bag, bin, box, filled with these leftover cords and chargers that we don't remember what they go to or we're holding on to them just in case we need them. And so if that sounds familiar to you, I recommend just going through and taking one last pass through this location and seeing if you can identify anything from there and if you can't, make peace and just say goodbye. Number eight, an excess number of suitcases. Now, if you're a large family that needs to pack a lot of items and you travel regularly, by all means, keep the suitcases that you need. But if your family is more like mine and you don't travel together as a large group very often, why keep 10 suitcases? We have actually pared down our suitcase collection to one large suitcase, one small suitcase, and then carry on backpacks that we can use if we're traveling. In fact, we took trips to China two separate times and four of us went each time, lived out of one suitcase for two to three weeks and then had our carry-on backpacks. And that is was perfectly fine for us. It definitely can be done. So if you have suitcases around that are just taking up space, collecting dust, consider if you actually need to keep them around. Number nine on the list of things your house does not need is baby items. So many baby items truly are not needed. They're just marketed really well and the expectant parents get really excited about the idea of having their baby sleep longer hours or be more content during the day, but quickly find out that all kids are different and not every product works for every baby. And so if you are finding yourself in that situation with a lot of excess baby items around, don't have any guilt about decluttering these items if they're not being useful to you. And if you are done expanding your family, you're not going to be having any more kids or passing it down to any other kids, definitely get rid of the baby items. Don't try to holding on to them for future generations because those items will break down in quality and they could be used right now by somebody else that has a baby. Your grandkids are likely not going to be able to use them. Number 10, all the makers. Bread maker, the rice maker, waffle maker, juice maker, specialty coffee maker. There is a device gadget maker for just about everything, especially in the kitchen. These are very common. Now, if it's something that you use regularly, by all means, keep it around, enjoy it, and it makes your life much more simple, that's great. But if you bought a bread maker, for example, to make bread more conveniently, but you're never making bread, then that big bulky item is sitting in your cabinet, making it much more inconvenient to get to the things you actually use. Number 11, items from a past career or lifestyle. I've been guilty of this one and I'm willing to bet that some of you have as well. If you've worked in a specific profession for a number of years, there's likely some tools and different items that helped you get your job done more efficiently, more effectively. But now that you are, maybe you've switched careers or you retired, what good are those items doing you anymore? So instead of hanging on to them, maybe you could pass them down to someone who's just starting out in that profession and kind of spur on the next generation. Number 12, wrapping paper, gift bags, tags, ribbon, items of this nature. Let's be honest, how often throughout the year are we actually tasked with wrapping a gift? Christmas time is a big one, and then very sporadically throughout the year, we may also have to wrap something but yet we tend to hold on to a huge variety and surplus of this category of items. So I definitely recommend putting some sort of boundary limits to make sure that it doesn't get out of control. Number 13 on the list of items that your house does not need is shelves and shelves of books. Now I might get a little bit of hate on this one, but hear me out. 
I think that books are similar to DVDs, music CDs, or games in that they are a form of entertainment and to me they are consumable because most of the time once you've read a book for enjoyment, it's unlikely that you're going to go back and read it again unless they are the type of reference book that you do look back at time and time again to look up different tables or different information. Usually you're not going back to them, at least that is my common experience, that's what I hear from many people. And so books, even though we have these adventures while we read them, they can quickly add up to be a lot of clutter in our homes. Now don't get me wrong, books are wonderful, our family enjoys them, we do keep some in our home. As you saw in the home tour video, our kids have a little library space for children's books and then Craig and I have our books down in his office. The idea though is just to be really mindful about how many books that you're keeping. I'm constantly reevaluating and deciding if we need to keep these books around, if we have been looking at these books often enough to um, merit them space in our home. And if not, I'm always happy to donate them to a thrift store or put them in those little free libraries that are dotted around the neighborhoods to let someone else enjoy them. Because if I've already enjoyed them and I'm not going to go back to look at them again, I want somebody else to have that pleasure. And I know that I always have access to books online or at the public library. Number 14, a cupboard full of mugs or cups. This is a very practical, simple gift idea. So it's no wonder that we usually accumulate more of these than we actually need. If you're finding yourself with an overabundance of drinking vessels, take a little time, maybe three, four weeks, and really pay attention to the ones that you're grabbing for most often. These are the ones that you'll probably want to keep and the others maybe are just clutter. This is a prime example of a type of item that you can only use one of at any given time. Number 15, any consumable product that is expired or mostly used up. I understand that the label on a product doesn't necessarily mean that it has gone bad, but you'll need to do some research on that for yourself and decide if it's safe for you to consume that item. If not, those items have no spot in your home. And if you have a product that is mostly used up and you're able to transfer it to another bottle or package, you can really save yourself a lot of space. So be mindful of those expired or mostly used up items. Number 16 on the list of things that your house does not need is flashy and loud toys. Oh, how I wish that I would have been able to give myself this advice years ago when our kids were little. Those brightly colored toys with the catchy songs and the flashing lights are marketed so well, but then we bring them home and they annoy us big time. And the worst part about it is that when the kids are playing with them, they're not learning much at all because it is doing all the imagination for them. Learn from my mistake and stick to those open-ended toys, the wooden blocks, the Legos, doll houses, play farm animals, and kick those other flashy, brightly colored things to the curb. And the final thing that your house does not need is more than one toilet brush or plunger. We're really going to finish this list off in an epic way, but in all seriousness, these items are gross germ magnets, and yet many homes have one of each in every single bathroom, we do it for convenience because we think it is much more handy to have those items right there when we need to use them, but I would argue that it's actually a lot more inconvenient to have to make sure to keep these things clean and sanitized and away from kids who might be interested in what they are. And so I instead recommend just having one of each and keeping them in a spot that you can access them easily. I have a rotation system where I carry around my toilet brush with me as I clean the bathrooms, use the same toilet brush in all four toilets and it works perfectly fine. As far as the plunger, we keep it in a central location. Ours is in the garage and if we need it, we can just go and grab it. All right, there you go. That is 17 more things that your house does not need. As I said at the beginning of the video, if these are things that you like having around, you use them often, then they are not clutter to you. By all means, keep them around. But if as I was listing these items, it made you stop and think for a moment, pause and consider re-evaluating if you want to have them in your life, then that's great. I would love to hear which items resonated with you. Please leave me a comment down below so that we can chat about it. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope that you'll stop by the cottage again really soon.